In this video, I'm going to discuss a major breaking change that you may encounter when upgrading from Ruby version 2.7 to version 3. If you make use of hashes or keyword arguments as parameters in your method calls, some of your method calls may now raise an error in version 3. So first, let's talk about the difference between positional arguments, hash arguments, and keyword arguments. Here's an example of a positional argument. This method takes exactly three arguments and combines them together. When you run this in Ruby version 1, version 2, or Ruby 3, you'll get the same result. But this type of interface is not very flexible. One of the ways that you can make it more open-ended is to treat one of the arguments as a hash, which is something that you often see in interfaces such as within Rails. A lot of methods have an options argument which allows you to pass an open-ended set of settings as a hash. Now let's take a look at what happens when we modify that method which takes only positional arguments. Let's change the second two arguments to be a set of optional parameters to be taken in as a hash. We'll rewrite the code here to look at the options hash for the key's first name and last name and treat those as if they were arguments two and three from the last method. As you can see, we get the same result in Ruby 1.9, 2.7, and 3.0. Now, a little shorthand that Ruby offers is that you don't have to enclose the options hash in curly braces to declare it as a hash when you're passing it as a method call. You can just type out the hash key value pairs. As you'll see later, this is significant, and it's going to cause some confusing behavior later on when we introduce keyword arguments. So here's what happens when you perform the same method call without the curly braces. The result is the same across all three versions of Ruby. It also doesn't matter if you make the hash an object and pass that as an argument either. Here's what happens if we pass our hash key value pairs from within a variable called hash. You get the same result. Ruby version 2 introduces a new feature called keyword arguments. This behaves very similarly to a hash in syntax, but adds the benefit of allowing you to explicitly define a list of accepted parameters and default values if you want. Here's a quick example of how keyword arguments work. Notice the parameter declarations. I've assigned arg a default value as a positional argument, but I could have also set a default value as a keyword argument by using a colon instead of an equal sign. First name and last name are required keyword arguments. We can use the same syntax for calling this method as we did for the method that took the hash parameter. Let's give this a try. When I try to declare this method in a Ruby 1.9 console, it won't be accepted because the keyword argument syntax hadn't been introduced yet. So let's compare how keyword arguments work in Ruby 2.7 and version 3. As you can see, they both behave exactly the same using this input syntax. Now let's see what happens when we wrap our argument call in curly braces, making it a hash object. Ruby 2.7 accepts the parameters this way, but Ruby 3.0 raises an error. This is because Ruby 2.7 includes a feature that will automatically convert a hash into keyword arguments where appropriate. The removal of this feature is a major breaking change in version 3, Here's a clip from RubyConf 2019 where Mats, the creator of Ruby, explains why this feature of 2.7 was a regretful decision and had to be removed. Ruby 2.0 introduced uh, some part of the keyword argument, but uh, we have to support the uh, pre-existing emulation. So the, uh, combining that, the, we have some weird uh, key corner cases. So it's kind of confusing. For example, uh, what, should, what should happen? Let's take a look at this example. On this method m, there's a positional argument and a keyword argument. When you run this code in Ruby 2.7 and try to pass in the syntax key colon 5, Ruby 2.7 will automatically convert that syntax to a hash with a key named key having a value of 5. Because that hash gets treated as a first positional argument, A, the keyword argument gets ignored and the variable key is initialized with a default value of 10. So inside this method, 
you have the variable a set up as a hash and the variable key set up with its default value of 10. This may not have been your intention if you wanted the keyword argument to work and set the value of key to 5 instead of 10. In fact, for that intention, this code doesn't even make much sense. Because if you set the keyword argument key, what happens to the positional argument a? Ruby 3.0 handles this in a more logical way by reading key colon 5 as the keyword argument, which causes it to raise an error because the positional argument a is not set to any value. I'd now like to highlight an example of where this change broke a program I was recently working on. In this program, there's a base class with a method that takes a set of arguments and passes them on to another method. This delegation pattern broke because it was dependent on Ruby 2.7's automatic conversion of hash values into keyword arguments. So in this example, service base call takes a set of arguments using the double splat operator. Those two asterisks define open-ended keyword arguments, which means that any keyword arguments passed into this method get coerced into a hash format. This arguments hash then gets forwarded to the next method call in the chain, which uses keyword arguments. In Ruby 2.7, this worked fine because the hash args would automatically be converted to keyword arguments. However, this feature was removed in Ruby 3.0, which causes an argument error. One way we could fix this problem is to double splat args before the hash is passed on, which when used in a method call like this will convert the hash into keyword arguments just as Ruby 2.7 did automatically. Ruby 2.7 also introduces another option for fixing this problem called the delegation operator. If we replace the argument references in our delegation method with three dots, it will pass through any and all arguments as if you were calling the AND method in this chain. Well, I hope that gives you a clear view of how keyword arguments have changed in Ruby 3.0 and the deprecations involved. If it helps you figure out how to perform a much more smooth upgrade of your legacy code, be sure to give this video a like. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this on Ruby on Rails and software engineering. See you next time.